So you make a couple of bad financial decisions. You spend too much money, you're not making enough money, and your bank account goes into overdraft. You now owe money to the bank, but you still kind of have this access to resources, so you kind of keep on spending money. Now you are getting stressed out about this, and probably you end up spending money that now you don't have on things you shouldn't be spending money on, and things that are probably just soothing you. Now to make it even worse, you have debt on your debt because you're paying fees for being in overdraft. Emotions are very similar and depression is very similar. Virtually no one wakes up one morning feeling depressed after having lived a life of complete bliss and happiness. That can happen, but we would be talking about some sort of pathology and some physiological thing going on. For most people, depression is a slow build. It's slowly but surely taking your emotions into overdraft. And then you wake up one day to the reality, which is... I have no happiness left. I have no smiling left. I have no laughing left, and I have no energy left. When you realize that, it's not too late. And for a lot of people, that's the beginning of the bounce back. It can happen. But we both know that the journey back is much harder than the journey that took you down there. And then there's one very interesting moment in that journey that must be discussed more because as you start doing the right thing in order to improve your self-esteem your levels of positive emotion your ability to actually not be so envious and resentful and snarky towards other people who are not struggling which is a very common symptom of people who are depressed is that they resent those who are not. As you start to progress and kind of go up that ladder, one thing that happens is that you realize a couple of things. One is that you have more and more responsibility and that can be very, very stressful. You start to realize that you have responsibility towards yourself, towards others because now you're making progress so others expect that progress to continue and that's very anxiety inducing for someone who's gotten used to just letting go of all responsibilities so that anxiety can create a relapse uh, going back to a more known darkness rather than exploring unknown territory but if you fight that urge and i hope you do then there's another moment that we have to be very careful about. Let's say you spend one year progressing, just pushing forward, just fixing one thing at a time. First you fix your sleep, then you start to fix your diet, then you maybe quit smoking, you start drinking less, you start socializing with certain people who are toxic, less and you perhaps learn the value of spending alone time. You become comfortable with your own company. And these are all great markers for progress. But here's a plot twist. You were in overdraft. So you're not making profit yet. You're just walking, slowly but surely, towards zero. Now imagine this. You were a thousand pounds in overdraft. You realize that you made a bunch of bad decisions and you start fixing your budget in this case. Okay. One day you look at your bank account and it says minus 500. Now, that's still a number. It is minus 500, but it's a number. And the reality is that you look at that number and you think, well, I'm making progress. 
Um, my overdraft allows me to borrow up to two grand, so, you know, I'm okay. I'm okay, right? You kind of feel you don't have any money, but you don't think about that because you've gotten so used to being in overdraft that you're thinking only on borrowed money. The issue is that when you get to zero, then you realize that you are at zero. You don't want to put that minus behind the numbers again. You don't want to put that back on there. You want to see the numbers grow, but this is the moment when you realize that you've got nothing. And emotionally, that's a very complicated gray area because you will not feel depressed anymore. You will not feel tremendously anxious. You don't feel sad all the time. You feel sadness, but you don't feel sad. But you also haven't quite learned how to experience happiness yet. Or joy, or gratefulness. And so you realize that you're just blank. And not in a numb way, the way people feel when they take drugs and stuff like that. I guess the best analogy is, you will realize that at that point, you've pressed reset. You are out of that matrix. But the problem is that you don't know where to go next. And that feeling of zero, it can be again very dangerous because having now the responsibility to go higher than zero because you don't want to go back to minus and overdraft but going higher than zero is new and so it takes courage to continue past that point so i say to you if this is something that you're experiencing or if this is something that someone you know is experiencing please understand that that moment of hitting zero is a crucial moment where people have to ask themselves, okay, do I celebrate? But I'm at zero. But, okay, if I do celebrate, how do I celebrate? I don't want to go back to the old way I used to celebrate, which was a self-soothing way. I want to make sure that I celebrate in a new way as well. So support yourself or someone else in this understanding of what's the process of recovery. I would say if you are now at zero or aiming to achieve zero from being in a position of emotional debt, then yes, do celebrate. Give yourself a good old pat in the back because what you've achieved is the start of your recovery. Don't be scared of the number zero. It doesn't mean that you're a zero, it just means that you've pushed reset. And now, you get to start over. Just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Before you know it, it's not gonna say zero anymore, it's gonna say 10, and then 100, and then 1000. And happiness is just like anything else. It's a resource that you cultivate, and it compounds. So don't be scared of zero. And uh, hang in there.